At Marriage Helper, we have been able to work with thousands of couples from around the world, and we've been able to see the intimate details a lot of times of what ended up causing or leading up to the crisis that they ended up having in their marriage. And we've started to see that there is quite a pattern that sometimes can happen. And in fact, a lot of times a crisis that happens in a marriage is predicated by some kind of loss in one or both of the spouse's lives before that. So I'm joined today by David Matthews. He's one of our workshop facilitators. He's been doing, working with Marriage Helper, doing our workshops for over 10 years, mm -hmm. done many of them, love him, he and his wife that are on our team, but they are also the founders of Spark of Life, which is a ministry that has focused on just helping people overcome loss. Right. And our, of our, any kind. Yes, a loss of any kind. That's mm -hmm. really important, and it does affect marriages. We've mm -hmm. dealt with grievers from all over the world, thousands of them, mm -hmm. and we see where loss uh, sometimes is the missing ingredient that people don't recognize as a, a deep loss. And as you said, later on, they get in a crisis, mm -hmm. and often the loss that they really haven't dealt with in a healthy way contributes to marriage crisis. Yeah. We're going to talk about a specific one today, but there's going to be a series of videos that we have with David where he's talking about his expertise on how loss affects different things that happen in marriage. But the one that we're going to start with today is how job loss right. can affect a marriage. Yeah. And it, it's, it's so crucial to understand it as loss. When somebody loses a job, sometimes they lose a job because they want to lose it. In other words, mm. they are going to something more exciting to mm -hmm. them or they're retiring, that's a job loss as well. And, and then the big one, of course, somebody doesn't think I'm worth employing, so right. I, I get fired from a job. All right. those are job losses. And the first thing I wanna share is that it's really important to recognize these as losses, and they can be major losses. And uh, for example, somebody gets fired, and the, uh, let's say it's the husband, and sometimes it's the wife, but let's say it's the husband, and and the wife doesn't understand what he's going through. He doesn't understand that that loss that he experienced is also a loss for his wife. It's a loss mm -hmm. for both of them. Mm -hmm. And the definition of loss sometimes helps. Loss is, is the normal and natural response, or grief is the normal and natural response to loss of any kind. That's important to recognize that this is a grief thing. Mm -hmm. And if you don't deal with the grief, it comes out in other areas in marriage and then it, it can blow up. It could be, it could lead to the loss of the marriage someday. And there's other factors as well. And the other definition is that grief is the conflicting feelings caused by the end of or a change in a familiar pattern of behavior. So mm -hmm. if a guy's been working for 20 years and it's his passion, it's his identity, mm -hmm. and, and then he loses that job mm -hmm. even if he wants to leave. And sometimes you can be fired and still wanna leave the job. That happened to me. Okay. Mm -hmm. I was fired even though I wanted to get out of that job. And I, I, it took me six months to realize I was in grief. Mm -hmm. And we were doing grief retreats and grief workshops all over the country. Mm -hmm. I was not understanding it was grief because my heart was broken. Right. I felt discarded, devalued, disrespected by mm -hmm. the people I worked with. And it was a huge loss for me. Mm -hmm. And so the first thing that... Uh, we need to kind of establish is that loss of job uh, can lead to deep grief and we need to recognize it as grief and then go from there in dealing with it as we would any other kind of loss. So one of the things you mentioned, and I find this really fascinating and can see how it's a loss for both people. For both. So the one who was employed, but also right. the one who wasn't right. employed. So if they're both having to deal with this loss, how do they deal with it separately while also being there for each other Yeah, and I, even recognizing what that looks like? I think the first thing I have to recognize it, I'm in grief. Mm -hmm. And so is my spouse. Okay. Both are in grief. And so the first thing we try to teach people, uh, or one of the first things is context. Mm. Every loss is in context of every other loss. Every relationship is in context of every other relationship. All of life is in context. Mm -hmm. So here's a guy that loses his job, mm -hmm. and let's say his dad was highly successful. 
right? Mm -hmm. And his dad put pressure on him to achieve, to be successful. And mm -hmm. he felt like he could never live up to his dad's standards and he could never please his dad. Mm -hmm. That's the context of this guy's loss of his job. Mm -hmm. And let's say the wife grew up and his, her father was an alcoholic who never kept a job, right? And it caused chaos for her family. And so they were always in financial crisis. And this actually is a, a real case scenario. I mean, it really happens right. all the time, things like this. And so she, she, her loss of her husband's job is grief for her because now she's afraid, she's full mm -hmm. of fear. Oh no, our life is gonna be like it was when I was growing up when my dad never kept a job, right? right? So she responds with hurt and pain. If he doesn't know her background, right. then he thinks, it's all about you. I've mm -hmm. lost my job. I work mm -hmm. hard at this job. I went to school for this job. I've sacrificed for this job. And now it's all about you. That's what he could think. Right. And she thinks, well, you're so insensitive. You don't even care that I'm hurting, mm -hmm. right? And you're accusing me of not caring for you. And so mm -hmm. you can see how that's a foundation of really bad things for this marriage. Right. Then they end up in a marriage workshop. Right. Okay. Which is a good thing. It's a good thing. <laughs> it is that they end up there. Right. And so context is vitally important. So they need to understand each other's story mm -hmm. the best they can. Now, if I don't know your story, mm -hmm. right, I need to assume you have a story, mm. right? I might mm -hmm. not know it. So if, if you act kind of weird toward me, and, and you have three or four times, right? <laughs> yeah. We're okay. friends. We're so we friends. <laughs> yeah, speaking as friends. Uh, I need to understand that you have a story that makes sense. I call it making sense of the nonsense. Hmm, I like it. Yeah. And so, so context is really important. And that really leads us to the second vital point is permission. Permission. I need to give my spouse permission to grieve the way they need to grieve mm -hmm. because their grief is in context of their whole life. Their loss is in context of other losses. So, so, so part of permission, I need to give myself permission. So when I was fired mm -hmm. from a job, uh, you know, I, I come from a faith background. And mm -hmm. so here's this faith background that says, so the preacher who used to be me, the preacher always says, you need to be grateful and thankful when you're feeling bad, you need to be thankful. Mm. So I lose a job and I realize that I can get another job and that other people are, are destitute, right? And I can still pay my bills or maybe I'm struggling, but oh, I need to be thankful. So yeah, I do need to be thankful, but what happens is that might minimize me dealing with my grief. Mm -hmm. So I need to give myself permission to feel bad, mm. okay, and not fight it. Hmm. And the more I fight it, the deeper I go in the depths of grief. So grief is like waves in an ocean. So here's, we we're in Hawaii a couple of months ago. So here's these big, huge waves. If I try to stand up against the wave and brace myself, I am not gonna let this wave come. I'm gonna get hurt, right? If I go with the wave and give myself permission to let the wave carry me wherever it wants to go, I'll be okay. And so you, you have this husband and wife and one has lost the job. They need to understand context, it, that there's a story. Mm -hmm. And therefore, when I understand that, I give my spouse permission to grieve the way they need to grieve mm -hmm. without comparing my losses to other people. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and without, if I say to Debbie, if Debbie loses her job, I say, well, honey, you need to be thankful we, you know, we've got eight healthy grandkids and we got four healthy kids. I'm denying her right to grieve, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to fix her, mm -hmm. right? If she doesn't give herself permission to grieve, she will try to deny those, those moments that come, the waves of grief, and fight against it. And if I'm trying to fix her, if I, as a husband, I'm a good fixer. I'm a man. I'm a, an American man, <laughs> right? I'm a Western culture man. My job is to fix everybody, mm -hmm. especially my wife. And I'm saying, that's wrong. Don't do that. Okay, right. don't, don't try to fix. So when I try to fix Debbie and say, you should be thankful for what you have, what I'm telling to her is, if you were as smart as me, you wouldn't grieve. If you had a better faith, you wouldn't grieve, mm -hmm. right? And then I put guilt on her. Mm -hmm. and, and now she has all these, these feelings. She already feels bad about losing her job. And now I'm putting more on her with, and, and I'm a good guy. Right. I'm trying to help her. Right. I'm not trying to hurt her, but in the, in the, so I need to stop trying to fix her, give her permission. Mm -hmm. And so 
I think context and permission are really important mm -hmm. uh, for both both spouses, mm -hmm. the one who lost the job and the one who is affected by that loss as well. Mm -hmm. But what if, I mean, how does that look if one spouse, say the wife, wanted the husband to lose the job? Okay. Maybe she didn't like how much he worked or whatever. He ended up leaving. Maybe it was because he felt like his wife was wanting him to, so right. he quit. Right. So when one spouse is happy about it, then how do you, how does what problems could that cause? I, I th I'll go back to permission. She needs to understand he's mm -hmm. grieving. Mm -hmm. And by the way, she's going to grieve too, even though she wants it. You can mm -hmm. want something to happen, plan for it to happen, like retirement or changing jobs, and both be excited about it, but they're still lost. Because hmm. loss is a change of, or uh, grief is a change of, or an end to a familiar pattern of behavior. So I go to work every day, I have goals, I, I'm excited about my job, but then I want to change jobs, or I get fired, or I lose my job. I have a change in a familiar pattern of behavior. Mm -hmm. And I might not recognize that as loss, because I want it. Mm -hmm. She might not recognize it as loss. She wanted her husband to lose the job. Then he might feel like she's controlling him. Mm -hmm. Maybe he liked the job, mm -hmm. right? So now he feels not only a, a loss of a familiar pattern of behavior, and maybe some uh, some resentment toward his wife because she kind of forced him to change jobs that he didn't really want to do. Mm. So it's back to this. It's kind of like at marriage helper workshops. We talk about permission uh, to express your feelings to each other, right? And mm -hmm. and so and we talk about flooding and what do you do with flooding? So if the couple talks about it before it actually happens, mm -hmm. right? Then when it does happen, so oh my goodness, right. I'm flooding. So more prepared. Talk, yeah, be yeah. prepared for that. And that's why we're doing this video. Yeah. Permission to grieve, put it in context mm -hmm. and uh, and stop trying to fix each other. Yeah. Let each other grieve. Yeah. That makes sense. It does make yeah. sense. Yeah. I can see how it can be hard, though, especially it's if difficult. you don't even recognize. I mean, that first part is recognizing it as loss and, right. you know, as you were saying, being willing to grieve about it because yeah. it why do you think that it's hard for people to accept that they're grieving i think it's our western culture uh other cultures deal with grief a lot better mm. than us generally mm -hmm. speaking mm -hmm. in america in western culture i mean europe we could include in that right sure uh we have we've cleaned up grieving we we've cleaned up loss mm -hmm. you know we have funeral homes i'm all for funeral homes my dad's first memory was his dad dying when he was three mm -hmm. in 1916. Mm -hmm. that was my dad's first memory the body laid in state on the dining room table in their house right that's the way people used to do it oh my goodness right and so and i'm all for i don't want that right. <laughs> i'm no. glad we've cleaned it up mm -hmm. uh and, and plus, in our culture, it, you know, we have all these myths about grieving. Uh, big boys don't cry, right? for example. Mm -hmm. in, in our grief recovery retreats we do all over the country, it's a three-to-one ratio of women to men who come. Hmm. And all the men who come are glad they're there after they're there. Mm -hmm. Almost all the men were dragged to the retreat by their wife, mm. almost all of them. That's so fascinating. Yeah, it is they fascinating. they don't want to deal with that emotional side of it. Men want to fix Mm. That's our deal. Mm -hmm. Don't bother me with emotions. I've got to get out and do something. So mm -hmm. the why, and, and that's giving each other permission to grieve in our own way. That's mm -hmm. a huge point with permission that maybe I didn't make clear. Mm -hmm. So so the the husband goes to work immediately. Mm -hmm. Let's say he loses his job. Well, he's out there trying to get another job, usually, not all the time. But he's out there, he's, he's got to do something, right. right? And she's fretting about it because she doesn't know how the bills are going to be paid. She wants security, right? Yeah. She wants to feel safe. Mm -hmm. And and he says, why are you so weak? Why are you crying all the time? Why do you, You're worried. And then he, he reads her as, you don't have faith in me. Mm -hmm. you, you don't have confidence that I can take care of this family. Right. And so that, you know, and that's real typical. That's yeah. real typical. So that's why we got to, maybe this video can help people, but if they're in the throes of it, Remember that everybody grieves the way they've got to grieve. Hmm. Uh, we had we had couples come to our retreat that have had miscarriages mm -hmm. uh, and and loss. We're going to talk about that in another video. Mm -hmm. And then we've had couples who've come because they've lost their job, mm -hmm. and 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 they feel guilty even being there. Mm -hmm. Okay, 
And so permission to grieve the way I need to grieve without comparing my loss to anybody else, right? Right. And so I think that's real vital. Absolutely. So even as you're talking, I'm remembering when my husband left the military. Okay. And it was something we were prepared for, Right. right? It was something... We both wanted, just like you're saying. But when he left, it was like you were saying, there was a change in the normal pattern of routine. Right. And he wasn't expecting to go into depression. And it took a while before he even realized it. I think it was about a year and a half into it. But he took, really it was two years before he even started looking for another job. Were you frustrated with that? <laughs> yes. I did not handle it well. I mean, right. I'm the, like, go do something. Right. Like, just go do something, right? Go yeah. do something. Right. And then the more I saw him get in this pit, it was like, re- so I tried to really get him to go do something. So you're trying to fix him. I was trying to fix him. Yes, you were. I was. And it was, there was a context in my mind right. and a story of, I don't, like, here's what I don't want our future to be like, was the story I was telling myself. It was mm-hmm. this fear of... He's going to be a couch potato the rest of our lives, right? Like, (laughs) this can't be our marriage. And it did not help our relationship. Yeah. And so one of the things in the permission to grieve, so he was handling it the way he needed to handle it. What he didn't need was me doing it the way I was doing it. Yeah. Um, But it makes so much sense, even just looking at it from that context Uh of, yeah, it led to fights, even fights that weren't connected to that. And you don't realize it's connected. And you don't realize. Yeah. You just assume he's lazy or he's mm-hmm. insensitive or mm-hmm. he doesn't care about you. Mm-hmm. Right. All that stuff. Right. All those things. It's conflicting emotions, too. It's conf- The other thing about permission is permission to recover. Mm. See, and, and what Rob probably did was mm-hmm. he was sad and dep- mm-hmm. he had lost part of his identity. OK. And identity is a huge deal with jobs, right? It is. This it was is the only who he one is. he ever knew. And especially military. I mean, yeah. I, it's not just that. It's other areas, too. But, mm-hmm. you know, he's doing something noble and good mm-hmm. for his country and all that. Right. Uh, but he also needs to be challenged mm-hmm. to recover. Mm-hmm. And the, the big word for recovery that I like is restarting, mm-hmm. right? And when I give myself permission to recover, I don't feel like recovering. So permission to recover Recovery, a choice to recover, recovery is a decision I make, not an emotion I feel. It's mm-hmm. much like forgiveness. Hmm. Uh, so I decide to recover. I have the right to recover. I can recover, but I have a right to grieve. Mm-hmm. And it's like this. The recovery process is like this. There's days you feel better, and, and then you go down. You think you're doing really good mm-hmm. in recovery from a loss, and then you sink deeper than you were before in mm-hmm. your mind. But really, that's the process. So if I give myself permission to have this, and it's not pretty, and it's difficult, Mm -hmm. I have in my mind, if I can't have in my mind, it's okay for me to recover. And recovery is a decision. And we have an online course where that is a big deal. Mm -hmm. I can decide to recover, and I don't have to feel like it. Well, that that kind of frees me up. I say, okay, I, I feel terrible. Mm. Sometimes I don't want to get out of bed in the morning, right. but I have, I can decide to recover. How do you decide to recover? You restart again. You do the next right thing. Mm. You realize it's part of the process. Now it's not easy, right? We have had people who've come to retreats and 10 years later they write us or, or a month after the retreat they write us. And we get this all the time. I just want everybody to know in our group that I've had a terrible terrible week. It's mm-hmm. awful. But I remember what y'all taught us. Mm-hmm. It's okay to go to that pit. It's okay. It's part of the process. Tomorrow I might feel better and I can decide to do something today. Mm-hmm. That's right. One of our uh, uh, attendees said that she decided to get out of bed before noon because mm-hmm. we always say do the next right thing, whatever it is. It mm-hmm. doesn't matter if it's, don't try to be big in it. Just right. be small. Get up and wash your face. That's Wash good. your face. That's all you. So restart. I don't know if you made a New Year's resolution. Did mm-hmm. you make any for this I year? I did. Yeah. Yes. Okay. H- have you broken it yet? <laughs> well, I'm sitting here. I'm like, what were they actually? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So my New Year's resolution every year is to read the Bible every day. Okay. Yeah. That's part of my, my makeup. Mm-hmm. And I blew it on January 3rd. Okay. I've been doing this for 51 years since I've <laughs> been a 51 years. 
I have had a New Year's resolution <laughs> to read the Bible every day. I have failed every year before January 10th. <laughs> Honest, honest. But it hasn't honest. stopped you. Okay, I'm so trying. if I didn't, if I let that setback keep me from trying right. again, then I'm just going to sink deeper and never read the Bible. Never. So I got to restart. It's okay to restart. That's good. Yeah. And so restart with small things. Mm -hmm. And so it's the CPR context, permission, restart, mm -hmm. restart, restart. You are not weak. There's not something wrong with you that I need to fix. You are grieving. You grieve in your way. Uh, I grieve in my way. I give you permission. Can you imagine? Another R is reframing. That when, when you lose a job, for example, is that an opportunity for a marriage to grow in intimacy or not? It is an opportunity. Huge opportunity. It really is. So reframe. Yeah. Reframe. I love that. Joe talks a lot about reframing. Reframe. Now, you don't feel like it. Right. So give yourself permission. Now, especially if you're unaware of what we've been talking about. Exactly. But then, now they're aware. You're aware of it now, right? No excuses. No excuses. <laughs> no excuses. <laughs> but you'll feel like quitting. Yes. That's part of the process. Yes. And if my spouse feels like quitting, don't assume they're lazy or they don't care. Mm -hmm. They're hurting. Mm -hmm. So assume there's a story there that makes sense of the nonsense. Mm -hmm. And then get up and restart. Mm -hmm. Okay? Uh, gratitude is a huge thing of recovery and grief. And uh, gratitude is one of the five building blocks of a healthy recovery. But we don't start with gratitude. Hmm. Okay, you have a loss, job loss. And I say, Kimberly, you need to be thankful that you've got these two adorable kids you, mm -hmm. you've adopted. Mm -hmm. Okay, you, you need to be thankful. So then you think, well, what's wrong with me? I'm an ungrateful idiot. Right. You know, I'm a terrible person. Yeah. Plus, you add that to your grief of losing a job. Hmm. So we say, no, 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 don't start with gratitude. When I experience loss, all I can think about is that loss. Sure. Even a job loss. I mean, that's a huge loss. Mm -hmm. And so, so what we eventually get to is gratitude, and it fits in with restart. So how do I restart? I do the next right thing and make it small. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get up out of bed before noon. Mm -hmm. I'm going to wash my face, and I'm going to watch TV all day. Okay, so that's a start, right? And then put in gratitude. So we give out a Spark of Life gratitude journal. And this is what we want them to do. Write down one thing you're grateful for. A lot of people do this. A lot of therapists do it. Write down one thing you're grateful for and don't write a book. Mm. So get up in the morning. When you get up, open your journal. Say, I'm thankful that I got up out of bed today. Mm. Just write two words mm. or three words. Mm -hmm. I'm thankful for my grandchildren who are healthy. Mm. Do not write a book because if you write a book, you won't do it every day. Right. Make it 30 seconds. That's good. 30 seconds, 10 That's seconds. Good. I am thankful for Debbie. I put that in my gratitude journal. That's restarting. Hmm. That's getting up in a healthy recovery. A healthy recovery is doing just little things, even if I don't feel like it. Make yourself do that which you can do, mm -hmm. which is get up, right? Mm -hmm. Or if you want to stay in bed all day, stay in bed all day. Grab the journal from your bedside and write <laughs> what you're thankful for. So gratitude is huge building block of a healthy recovery from any loss, including job loss. And don't misunderestimate the enormity of job loss. It, it can crush you. Hmm. It, it can put you on your back. It can make you doubt yourself. Mm -hmm. All those are normal and natural responses hmm. to, to that deep loss of a job loss. So husband and wife, just try to understand and give each other some grace and let them grieve. Don't assume it means all the negative stuff. That's so good. Yeah. That's so good. Spark of Life, they have, they do workshop or they do retreats, right. but they also have an online course now that is new, new, but amazing. I've seen the first couple of videos in it. And of course I've known David and Debbie for years and just really believe in everything that you do with Spark and the, the way that you've been able to help people, it's, it is fantastic. It deals, what they do with Spark of Life is very focused on overcoming loss of any kind, any kind. and focus on living forward. Right. And so if you want more information about anything that they do or their online course, you can go to sparkoflife.org. Dot dot org. Yeah. So sparkoflife.org, you'll see the link in the show notes below. And then if you have anything that we can help you with that you're saying this, we've, you know, we've had a job loss in our marriage and it, you know, we have fallen apart, then 
the beauty is that what Marriage Helper does works perfectly alongside oh, yeah. what Spark of Life does as well. So we would love to have you in one of our workshops as well. You could even come to one that David and Debbie are at. Um, and it just, it fits well. It fits yeah. so well together. Yeah, it really does. It really does. And many of the people who come to our retreats go to the workshops. And mm -hmm. many people who come to the workshops go to our retreats. It's yeah. a it's a really cool marriage. It oh, is. No pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. good. And in addition to being one of our workshop facilitators, David is actually one of our coaches as well. So we have amazing partnership mm -hmm. with their organization. We love having them on our team. And if there's anything that you need help with it, we can help you with it, Marriage Helper, for your marriage. Whether it's coaching or workshops or one of our online courses, then please visit us at marriagehelper.com or you can always give our office a call at 866-903-0990.